Welcome back. We're now working on section 7.4. This is will be this information will be on your third test. Uh, your second test will have the other sections on chapter seven, including the Louisville sections. So this is integration of rational functions and by partial fractions. We're going to have to learn how to do partial fractions. Unfortunately, that does sometimes require us to do long division. I know most of us don't enjoy doing long division of polynomials. So let's move on. Why do we care about something like partial fractions? Well, if I gave you the integration of x plus 5 over x squared plus x minus 2 dx, I wouldn't be able to solve it. Not the way it is. But if I stop for a second and I reverse engineer, so to say, uh, it's the equivalent of having 2 over x minus 1 minus 1 over x plus 2. Because what we're saying is x plus 5 at a the denominator here factors to this. So it looks like this. And then we'll find out what this is because we would say in layman's term, a over x minus 1 is equal to uh, minus b over some x plus 2, where a is some constant, b is another constant. We find out that a is equal to 2. and b is equal to 1. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a moment. So we always want, when it comes to working with partial fractions, we always want the degree of the numerator, numerator to be less than the degree of the denominator. Not less than or equal to, less than. If it's not, then we're going to have to do long division, and we're going to see a practice in long division once and not have to worry about that again. So Given this, x cubed plus x all over x minus 1, the numerator has a degree 3, the denominator is a degree 1. So I'm going to have to do long division. So I'm going to say x minus 1, that divides into x cubed plus, and I like to put 0x squared. I like to put placeholder so I don't lose where I'm at, plus x plus 0. And I'm going to do the division until I can't anymore. I get rid of that x cubed. I multiply everything through by an x squared. It gives me x cubed minus x squared. When we do long division, we remove that row by subtracting it. So I get an x squared, bring down this x plus x, bring that that 0. I want to get rid of the x squared over here. So that means I have to multiply this x by a plus x, x squared minus x. Again, I remove that row by adding it, or I mean subtracting it. I get a 2x plus 0. I want to get rid of the 2x. I multiply it by 2. 2x minus 2. I subtract this row. It gives me a positive with a remainder of 2. So we're saying it's x squared plus x plus 2. Plus, and when we write our remainders, we write it over what we were dividing by. We were dividing by x minus 1. So I can rewrite this integration because this here is equivalent to that. I can rewrite my integration as x squared plus x plus 2 plus 2 over x minus 1 dx. Now this is going to be a lot easier to integrate because when I look at it, all this I already know how to do. That's a polynomial. And this I actually know how to do because I could do a u substitution. So I'm going to say, I'm going to break this apart just so it's a little cleaner to see what I'm doing. dx plus the integration of 2 over x minus 1 dx for the right-hand side, I'm going to say let u equal x minus 1, du is equal to dx, so I'm having 2, 1 over u, du over here, and on the right-hand side, the left-hand side, I have an x squared plus x plus 2 dx. So I can easily integrate this, so I get x cubed over 3 plus x squared over 2 plus 2x plus 2 times the natural log of the absolute value of u plus a constant, but we're not using it. We don't want the absolute value of u. We want what u was. We want everything in terms of x, so I replace it with an x minus 1. To the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 1 plus a constant. And that's what we're going to do with this section. I'm not worried about bringing that 2 in and squaring everything. I'm going to leave it just like that. 
So that's an example using long division to get to my problem. I didn't have to do partial fractions because there was nothing to do a partial fractions for. That was just to show you the long division part. So case one, it says the denominator of Q, the denominator QX is a product of distinct linear factors. So distinct, so they're all different. Is in this case, this is already factored for you. If I'm kind, I will have problems on the test where they're already factored and you won't have to worry about the factoring because I'm really not concerned if you know, well, I am concerned if you know how to factor or not, but I'm not trying to test that knowledge. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to rewrite this as x squared plus 2x minus 1 all over because we're going to drop the integration. We want to solve for this partial fraction. 2x minus 1, x plus 2. That's equivalent to, and I'm going to break it out, a over x plus some b over 2x minus 1 plus some c over x plus 2. And I showed you briefly on the other one because the whole idea is that there's three fractions that I'm adding together to make this one fraction or one rational expression. I multiply everything through by the LCD. So my left-hand side just becomes this. It becomes a times 2x minus 1 times x plus 2 plus b times x times x plus 2 plus c times x times 2x minus 1. So now that we've done that, we can try to solve for what is a, what is b, and what is c. We'll do that by saying, all right, first, let x equal 0. Right, because it's going to cancel out this and this because that's zero. So I get minus one is equal to putting zero in for all my x's. I get a times a negative one times two, or negative one is equal to negative two a, or a is equal to one half. So now we know what a is. Next, I'm going to figure out what b is, which means I want to get rid of the one half. So I'm going to say, what? x equal one half. So that will cancel this and that one out. So I put in the, I put one half in, and I'm going to let you do the math on your own. I'm just going to give you the answer. B is equal to one fifth. And then I'm going to do the same thing and try to find out what the other part is. So I'm going to let x equal to negative two. That will get rid of this and this. And when I substitute negative 2 in for all my x's, c turns out to be equal to negative 1 tenth. And again, I'll let you do the work on your own. Um, I don't, you don't need to see me doing all that algebra. That is what they're equal to. But now that I know what a, b, and c are, and I know that this here is what I'm going to replace this with for my integration, I'm just going to do a straight forward replacement. I'm going to integrate. All right. Uh, a was one half, so I have one half times one over x plus one fifth times one over two x minus one plus c was a minus one tenth times one over x plus two dx. I'm going to rewrite this in, its, in different parts and clean it up a little. So I'm going to have one half the integration one half the integration of one over x dx plus one fifth the integration of one over two x minus one dx minus one tenth the integration of 1 over x plus 2 dx. The reason I broke it up here is so I can integrate everything itself. So let's do it one part at a time. This part becomes 1 half the natural log of the absolute value of x. Let's see, changing the color to red this part. I'll do a u substitution. I'm going to let 
u equal to x minus 1, du is equal to 2 dx, or 1 half du equals dx. So I have plus 1 fifth times 1 half, 1 over u du, which gives me 1 tenth the natural log of u, the absolute value of u, which was just 2x minus 1. This part I'm just going to copy down so they're all on the same line. Then I'm going to go and work on the last part. So I've got to find a nice color, well, a color. I'm going to do a u substitution here. Let u equal x plus 2. du is equal to dx. So I end up with a minus 1 tenth, 1 over u du, minus 1 tenth, the natural log. Instead of u, I'm just going to write what I mean it to be, x plus 2. And then don't forget my constant. So my answer for this is 1 half the natural log of the absolute value of x, plus 1 tenth the natural log of the absolute value of 2x minus 1, minus 1 tenth the natural log of x of the absolute value of x plus 2 plus a constant so that's a nice example very straightforward on how to work with partial fractions so again here's another one it's not factored but i could easily factor it to dx over x minus 3 x plus 3 so what am i trying to get at you still do need to know how to factor i'm going to say that 1 over x squared minus 9 is equal to a over x minus 3 plus b over x plus 3. I'm going to multiply through by the uh, LCD. I get 1 is equal to a times x plus 3 plus b times x minus 3. And then I'm going to solve. I'm going to say let x equal 3. When I let x equal 3, I end up with an a is equal to 1 sixth. And I say let x equal to minus 3. Through the substitution and everything, I end up with b is equal to a minus 1 sixth. So that's my a and my b value. I'm going to rewrite my integration now as 1 sixth, 1 over x minus 3 dx. I'm going to break it up immediately, subtract 1 sixth. 1 over x plus 3 dx. I'm going to do a u substitution and integrate. I end up with a 1 sixth to the natural log of x minus 3 minus 1 sixth the natural log of x plus 3, the absolute value of x plus 3, plus the constant. I'm going to leave it that like that. I'm not going to ask you to collapse that. I th okay, I thought maybe this in this notes it had to collapse. Well, some of the problems they collapse these, and I'm fine with this answer. So here's the next one. Case two it says if qx, which is the denominator, is a product of linear factors, some of which are repeated. So in other words, I have an x plus one quantity squared, which is what I have on this problem x plus 1 quantity squared. When we break this up, we have to account for there might be an x plus 1, and there might be a term that has an x plus 1 quantity squared. So I'm going to say 2x plus 3 over x plus 1 quantity squared is equivalent to some a value over x plus 1 plus some b value over x plus 1 quantity squared. Now, if it would have been cubed, quantity cubed, then I would have had a plus a C over X plus 1 quantity cubed. So I'm going to multiply 3 by the LCD. I get 2X plus 3 is equal to A times X plus 1 plus B. Right? So this one I'm going to say let X equal negative 1. If I solve for that, I end up with a B is equal to negative 1. But the question is, how do I find A? Well, if I think about this for a second, I could have expanded this part here, and I got an AX plus A plus B. All right, so I have 2X plus 3 is equal to AX plus A plus B. 
what we should notice is that 2 has to be A, and that 3 has to be A plus B. And that's the only way this is going to work out. Hold on for a second. I think I have a calculation error here. Yep. I knew there was a problem when I looked at my answer here. B is not negative 1. It's 1. I uh, had a copy error here. B is equal to 1. Not negative 1. So just be careful of that. Again, B was equal to 1, not negative 1. And that makes sense because if A is equal to 2... 2 plus 1 equals 3. That's good because that's what is over here. So I can use that as a way to figure out what my other terms are. If there's only one x term or I have a summation of them, I can figure it out. So now let's work this problem out. I have the integration of 2 times 1 over x plus 1 plus the integration of 1 over x plus 1 quantity squared dx. All right. Then I go through my problem. This becomes a 2 ln of u, which is just x plus 1. What I would do in the right-hand side here, I would do a u substitution. I'd say, let u equal x plus 1 du is equal to dx. So I have plus the integration of 1 over u squared du. 2 ln of the absolute wave x plus 1. The integration of 1 over u squared is becomes a minus 1 over u plus the constant, but u is x plus 1. So I have 2 natural log of x plus 1 minus 1 over x plus 1 plus a constant. And that should be what the answer is. So again, I just have to keep track of my signs. I apologize for having the wrong sign of that one problem. So that one here was a very simple x plus 1 quantity squared. Now look at this one. I have three factors. I have an x minus 3, I have an x plus 2, and then I also have an x plus 2 quantity squared. So I'm going to say x squared over x minus 3 times x plus 2 quantity squared is equal to a over x minus 3 plus b over x plus 2. And because it's squared, I have to have a c over x plus 2 quantity squared. Multiply 3 by my LCD, I get a times x plus 2 quantity squared plus b times x minus 3 times x plus 2 plus c times the quantity x minus 3. So I'm going to I'm going to let x equals negative two, and when I do that, I find that c is equal to negative four fifths. I'm going to let x equal three, and then I find out that a is equal to nine twenty fifths. But I haven't found out b. And the problem is I can't get rid of a and C to do that. So I need to expand. So going back up to my original problem, up here I have x squared is equal to expanding this. I have a times x squared plus 2x plus 4. All right, this is this. D times x squared minus x minus 6. plus c times x minus 3. Now that I've done that, let's distribute. Because I care about the x squared terms. I've still got to figure out what b is. So if x squared is equal to ax squared plus a times 2x plus 4. I'm just going to break that part apart. bx squared plus b times a negative x minus 6, plus c times x minus 3. I'm kind of shortcutting this because all I care about, really, at the end of the day, is these two x squared terms because I know that they have to sum up to be 1. 
So I have x squared is equal to a plus b times x squared. And if I know a is equal to 9 25ths, b then would have to equal 16 25ths. And that's what b is equal to. And then I have my problem written out for me. You know, again, I could double check that by finding out what the x terms are. Yeah, they're all by x terms, they should all cancel out because there is no x square. There is no x term on the left hand side, just like there is no constant on the left hand side. So the things should cancel each other out. This does work out. It is 16 25ths. So now I'm going to finish my problem. My problem I have 9 over 25, because that's what a is, over 1 over x minus 3 dx. Plus b, which we just found out was 16 over 25. 1 over x plus 2 dx. Plus c, well c was a minus 4 fifths. Times the integration of 1 over x plus 2 quantity squared dx. Doing the integration by now, you should be able to figure out what you need to do the integration. So I'm going to give you the answer. Natural log of the absolute value of x minus 3 minus 16 over 25, the natural log of x plus 2, the absolute value of the natural log of x plus 2, minus 4 fifths. Whoops, not natural log, I got ahead of myself. This becomes a plus 1 over x plus 2, plus a constant. This is the answer we're looking for. And that's an acceptable answer. You don't have to factor out any common factors. That's, that's good enough. On to the next slide. So this contains irreducible factors, none of which is repeated. It would be an irreducible factor, x squared plus 2 or x squared plus 1. I can't factor that. So it's irreducible. So this problem, I've got to factor the denominator 2x squared minus x plus 4 all over. I can factor an x out, x squared plus 4. Unfortunately, x squared plus 4 does not factor. So, I'm going to have to find, I'm going to have to figure out another way to find out what my linear terms are. x cubed plus 4x is equal to, well, we have an x, so it's 1 over x plus x squared plus 4. There could be an x term in there, so I'm going to write that as a bx plus c. So there may be an x term in there, so I'm going to write it as b times x plus c all over x squared plus 4. I'm going to do that bx or something times x plus a constant for all my irreducibles. Multiply 3 by my LCD. Gives me a times x squared plus 4 plus bx plus c times x. I'm going to say, well, let x equal 0. And when I let x equal 0, I find that the a is equal to 1. But the problem is I do not know b or c. So I need to figure out what b or c is. So again, it comes back to expanding. I have a 2x squared minus 4, minus x, sorry. Let me write this because I'm going to look at this and not know what I wrote. 2x squared minus x plus 4 is equal to ax squared plus 4a plus a bx squared plus a cx. All right. So I can rearrange things and gather up my like terms. 2x squared plus 2x squared. 2x squared minus x plus 4 is equal to a plus b times my x squared plus cx plus 4a, where a is my constant. And as we know, a is 1. Well, look at this. a is 1. There's a 4. There's a 4. That makes sense. c is probably going to turn out to be negative 1, because look at that. All right. Here's my c. C is negative 1. 
I don't know what B is, but I know 2x squared has to equal A plus B. X squared. So 2 has to equal A plus B, and if A is equal to 1, 2 is equal to 1 plus B, B equals 1. So now we know what all our terms are, and we could write our integration for that. I end up with a 1 over x, because A is 1 dx, plus, we said Bx, so it's 1 times x, x, minus 1 over x squared plus 4 dx. Note, uh, this part here is what we're going to look at real quick. Where did I get that? No, I had a bx plus c over x squared plus 4. So I had 1 times x minus 1 all over x squared plus 4. That's where it comes from, this part here. That's how I did the work. I just talked about it real quick, but... This is new for most of you, so I want you to see where I where it came from. So now I have 1 over x dx plus, instead of writing x minus 1 over x squared plus 4, I want to rewrite it, because I can break it up, it's a fraction, x over x squared plus 4 minus, and that's a dx, 1 over x squared plus 4 dx. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to figure out how to integrate this one. For here, we're going to let u equal x squared plus 4. du is equal to x dx. Not t. Sorry, I'm getting, I'm losing my mind here. u is equal to that. du, I'm sorry. So 1 half du is equal to x dx, which works out fine for us. Because here's an x dx that I can substitute for. So now I have the 1 half 1 over u du. So I take care of that part. This part's going to come all the way down as the integration of 1 over x dx. So adding to it. And then we're going to work on this part x squared plus 4, well, that's an arctan. So I'm going to rewrite this part. I'm going to factor out the 4 from the denominator. this a little clearer. So I'm going to factor out. Sorry, I'm just trying to write this so nice. I, as you all can see, I don't have the best handwriting. I'm going to factor it like that out. So now I have a minus one quarter. Oops, I'm really having a brain fart today. I took out a four. I have a minus one quarter. So if the four coming out of the denominator is one quarter. Over one over x over two, quantity squared plus one, dx. I'm now in that form, right? Given this, I can integrate to that. So here we go. natural log of x for that part plus one half the natural log of x squared plus four almost done minus one quarter the arctan of x over two plus c, but I have to account for that, x plus 2, so I really want it to be a minus 1 half arctan of x plus 2, plus a constant.
And this is the final answer. Because if I take the integration, just a side note, because I want to make sure we're all good with this. So, no. negative one half arctan inverse of x plus two. I take the derivative of that. The arctan, the derivative of arctan gives me one over x plus two quantity squared plus one, plus the derivative of this, which is another one half. There's my one quarter that I needed for that part. Whoops, not for there. For there's the one quarter I needed for this. So again, this here is our final answer. Move on to the next slide. I think you've done enough of these or seen enough of these that you can try to do this one on your own. So I'm going to pause the video, let you work on this. I'm going to work on it, obviously, and talk about my results. And then you can see how I did it, and I will talk through all my steps. Okay, you've had enough time to finish this problem on your own. So I set it up as 10 over x minus 1 times quantity x squared plus 9 is equal to a over x minus 1. And because it's irreducible, I need a bx plus c over x squared plus 9. I multiply through my LCD, and I get 10 is equal to a times the quantity x squared plus 9 plus the quantity bx plus c times the quantity x minus 1. I'm going to let x equals 1. That will get, get rid of the terms over here. And I end up with 10 is equal to 10a, or a is equal to 1. Next, I'm going to expand. When I expand, I end up 10 is equal to ax squared plus b, uh, 9a plus bx squared minus bx plus cx minus c. I'm going to gather up my terms. So I end up with 10 times, 10 is equal to a, the quantity a plus b times x squared plus the quantity c minus b times x plus not the quantity 9a minus c. 9a minus c is a constant, and it should be equal to 10. So I say if a is equal to 1 here, the 9a minus c has to equal to 10. Well, then c has to equal negative 1. And if c minus bx, there is no x term over here, c minus bx has to equal 0. That's the only way I can get rid of this x term. So c minus b equals 0. And if c equals negative 1, then b has to equal negative 1. Let's see how I can make that equal to 0. So now I rewrite a over x minus 1 plus bx plus c. Well, since bx is b is a negative 1, it's so a minus x. C is a negative 1, so it's a minus 1. So this is what I have here. That's over 9. I break this fraction apart to get the integration of 1 over x minus 1 dx. Subtract x over this x squared plus 9 dx. Subtract 1 over x squared plus 9 dx. Over here, I can do a u substitution. I'm going to say let u equal x squared plus 9. If I do that, then I find out it's 1 half du is equal to x dx. There's my x, there's my dx. So I can cancel them out, reduce that, and make it 1 over u du. There's the 1 half. I have to recognize that this is an arctan, x squared plus 1. But I have to make it in that form. So I factor out the 9. So I get x over 3 quantity squared plus 1. That 9 comes out as 1 ninth. I have this. Now I'm in the form of the arctan. My arctan, so my final answer is natural log of the absolute value of x minus 1. Subtract one half of the natural log of the absolute value of x squared plus 9. I don't need the absolute values because x squared plus 9 is positive. If you wrote that without parentheses on, uh, with parentheses instead of absolute value on the test, I'd be fine. Subtract one third the arctan of x over 3 plus c. We're almost done. There's only a few more slides left. So this contains a repeated irreducible quadratic factor. So looking at this, it's pretty big, right? I have an A, I have a B, I have a bunch of C, and this is way too hard for us to do. We're not going to do this one. You won't have to deal with anything like this on your test. If you really want to see the expansion, you go to Wolfram Alpha. I think the word is expand, and it will give you the answer for that. So let's look at the last two examples. This is rationalizing substitutions. Integrated contains an expression of the form the nth root of g of x. So I have a problem like this. x plus 4 all over x. Well, what do I do? 
I'm gonna have to do some crazy substitutions in here. So we're gonna do it different than what we've done before. I'm gonna say let u equal the square root of x plus four. If I do that, I could square both sides. I get u squared is equal to x plus four, or I could say x is equal to u squared minus four. If I do that, then I could take the derivative of both sides and I get a dx is equal to u du. That's good because I now have a way to substitute things. I, I could say, well, x is equal to this, right? I could also say that u, I put a u there, and I have a way to get rid of my du, my dx. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to rewrite this as u, because the square root of x plus 4 is u. Instead of x, we said that's u squared minus 4, so I'm going to rewrite that as u squared minus 4. And since I have to get rid of dx, I have to have everything in terms of u. We said dx was the same thing as 2u bu. So I'll give you a second to look at that and figure out what we're doing. All right, so I'm going to clean this up. Make it 2u squared over u squared minus 4 du. Now, here's the problem. This is the first time since the very first problem we looked at today that the denominator and numerator have the same exponent. So, of course, that means long division. And everybody's favorite thing to do, u squared minus 4. I want to divide that into 2 plus oh, 2u Sorry, 2u squared. So uh, to get rid of that, I multiply both sides, multiply by 2. I get 2u squared minus 8. I don't subtract. I, I, I subtract that row gets 8, so I have to have 8 over u squared minus 4. That's my remainder. So now my integration is going to be rewritten as 2 plus 8 over u squared minus 4 du, which I could rewrite as the integration of 2u plus, actually, I'm going to put the 2 on the outside. I like to put my constants on the outside so I don't get lost. du plus 8 over 1 over u squared minus 4 du. u squared minus 4 can be factored. u minus 2, u plus 2 du. So I'm going to find my partial fractions for that. I'm going to go through that. I'm just going to tell you that uh, I'm going to write this a over u minus 2 plus b over u plus 2 it is equal to. I'm going to leave that 8. I forgot. I'm going to leave that 8 in the numerator. Just makes it a little easier to work with. 8, and then it's going to turn out that a is equal to 2, and b is equal to minus 2. I'm just trying to save some time. You can verify that yourself. So now I have 2 du plus 2 times the integration of 1 over u minus 2 minus du minus the integration of 2 1 over u plus 2 du. That's a nice and easy one to integrate. I got 2u plus 2 ln of u minus 2 minus 2 ln of the absolute value of u plus 2 plus the constant. But I have to remember u is not what I had originally. It was in terms of uh, x. So instead of u, we have to re we substitute back in the square root of x plus 4. So we're going to substitute back in the square root of x plus 4 2 times the square root of x plus 4 plus 2 ln of square root of x plus 4 minus 2. Minus 2 times the actual log. I lost my 2 here. Of square root of x plus 4 plus 2 plus a constant. And if we look, this may be written in a different form. And it is. All they did was collapse it. This is a nice answer. This is a nice answer. If 
but I will absolutely, absolutely accept the answer I have down here with them broken apart. We have one problem left to do. So in this one, we're going to say let u equal x to the one third. So I get u cubed is equal to x, where three u squared is equal du is equal to dx. So I can integrate this from one to zero, one over one plus uh, u cubed plus u, sorry, times three u squared du. Cleaning that up, I get zero to one of three u squared over one plus u du. Yep, long division again. Because the numerator is larger than the denominator. So I'm going to say 1 plus u divides into 3u squared plus a u plus 0u plus 0. So I need a 3u. That gives me 3u plus 3u. We subtract that row. There's a minus 3u plus 0. Minus 3. Minus 3u minus 3. That gives me a plus 3 plus 3 over 1 plus u. So now we have what we could substitute in for our fraction there. I have a 3u minus 3 plus 3 over 1 plus u du. This is a pretty straightforward integration. I have a 3 halves u squared minus 3u plus 3 times the natural log of 1 plus u plus a constant. But we have to remember u is not what we had this originally in terms of. It was in terms of x. So I need to go back and put x to the one-third. Because you said u is equal to x to the one-third. So the three halves, and this oh, it's not plus a constant, by the way. We're evaluating this from 0 to 1. Three halves of x to the two-thirds minus 3x to the one-third plus 3 the natural log of 1 plus x to the one-third from 0 to 1. When I evaluate that, I get a 3 halves minus 3 plus 3 ln of 2 when I'm putting the 1 in. Subtract from that, there's a 0 minus a 0 plus 3 ln of 1, which, by the way, is 0. My final answer is minus 3 halves plus 3 ln of... I'm going to drop the absolute value and just make it a uh, parenthesis. That's the last slide for this section. That's everything that we need to do, 7.4. 7.5 is going to be a very easy section. That's the next section we cover. All of these are all the tips and tricks on how to solve these problems that we've been doing from 7.1 through 7.4. Thank you very much for your time. I look forward to seeing you in class. Have a great day.